Hello everyone. Welcome to Computing Concepts in Practice. Today I'm going to take you through creating VLANs and naming them. And after, by the end of this um, discussion and this practice, I have some sample CCNA questions that we, might, we will do together so that you can have an idea as to what kind of questions to expect if you are studying for your CCNA. So first of all, let's begin. What does VLAN mean? VLAN actually stands for virtual LAN, virtual local area network. That's VLAN. So in definition, we say it is like the logical um, division or the lo logical separation of computer devices on a same network um, switch. Usually most VLAN, VLANs are created on layer two. And when we talk about layer two, we're talking about the network switch. So that's the logical um, division of computer network devices. Um, usually they also say on a broadcast domain, but that is too technical. So let's just say, um, devices on a switch. Okay. So this is how it looks like, um, when you connect devices that are not on, um, on a VLAN. So to create, um, this network, you just have to click on devices, network devices, then select a switch and then choose the 2960 switch. It doesn't mean that any other switch will not do. I like just to use the first one because it's easy to just click on. Um, so we select the different PCs that we have, PC, PC8, PC9, PC10, PC11. So these PCs, I created them according to the amount of VLANs that we will be creating. During the VLAN session, we'll be talking about IT VLAN, management VLAN, HR VLAN, and voice VLAN. So I want to use this example in the non-VLAN aspect. Then once we're done, then we can have, um, we can use the same thing to do the, um, the, the practice. Okay. So we're going to connect each of these computers to the switch. Remember the right cable to use is a copper straight through cable. Copper straight through cables are used to connect devices that are unlike, for example, from a PC to a router, then from a PC to a switch. So things that are unlike, this is when you use what? A copper straight through. Okay. The other um, cable that you could use is also called a crossover, but usually crossover cable is used for um, devices that are like, for example, a switch to a switch, maybe a router to a router in that aspect. So remember that, or oh, a PC to a PC. So devices of like terms, you use what? A copper crossover. And then devices that are unlike, you use what? A copper straight through. Okay. So I'm going to use a copper straight through. So PC8, connect on the fast ethernet and then connect it on switch port F01. Next. And then F5. <clears throat> Next, on F10, next, on F15. Okay, so let's say that this network was given 192.168.0.0 slash 24. Slash 24 here means that we have a total of 256 addresses. But out of these 256 addresses, 254 are usable because the first network address, which is the 192.168.0.0 is the network address. And the last usable address is going to be the 192.168.0.255. Okay, so I'm gonna assign an IP address to each of these devices first to show you what we meant, especially when I'm explaining what VLANs are for. So go and click on the PC and then select desktop then configuration, then assign a static IP address 
of 192.168.0.0.0.1 as the first IP address. Okay, so that's correct. There's no gateway because we don't have a router. So we close this out. The next, next stop, configuration, then 192.168.0.2. Close that out. Next, desktop configuration 192.168.0.3. Close that out. Next, 192.168.0.4. And close that out. So with this, we can decide to try to see if the computers in my network can talk to one another. We can check our IP address first. How do we check our IP address? We use the command IP config. And you can see that the IP address of the first one is the one that we assigned 192.168.0.1. So we're gonna have to ping any of these other PCs. So, so ping is the command that we use to determine um, the response of uh, just to re to to find out if our neighbor is alive. Okay, we use it to just check on the person to see. So to verify a connectivity, we use what we call the ping command. So ping one nine two dot one six eight dot zero dot two. That's the next PC nine. So he's responding. That means that we can actually talk to him. And the PC three, the same is talking as well. We can talk to him. Then the next one, PC4, we can talk to him as well. So you see that everybody is connected to one space. So let's say that this was in a real work environment. So where this PC8 is IT, and then PC9 is management. Then HR is PC10. Then we have PC11 as for voice. Okay. So with this connection, you see that as long as these computers can talk to one another, that means that there is a possibility that files could be shared and anything can happen. Which at the normal circumstance, you can see that that's what we have in most of our workplaces. It is not safe. Okay, for internal purposes, you could say, okay, you know, we are all here, you know, it's one company. Yeah, it's good, but it's not so safe. So one of the benefits of a VLAN or why VLANs are important is the fact that it enhances security such that IT cannot just talk to um, management. Likewise, management cannot talk to HR. Likewise. HR cannot talk to people in the, I mean, voice data resources or whatever. So this is the purpose of VLAN. So logically, it divide each of these into networks connecting to the what? Switch, okay, okay. So now let's start to create the VLANs. To create a VLAN on the switch, it's easy. Okay, so let's do it. So you click on devices, click on the switch, select your switch, okay. Now, a new set <clears throat> so to help us understand better. Sorry, delete. Yes. So we're going to have our PCs next. PC. Okay. PC 12, PC 13, PC 14. PC 15. So again, this is going to be our, what? our IT in this case. Okay, yeah, you're right. So let's say IT one, since we cannot use the same name management one, then we have HR1. Then we have 
voice. One. So we have our switch. So we connect the PCs to the switch again. Ten. Okay, perfect. So we're gonna have to now go into the switch, but remember when you are implementing VLANs, that means that even though these are on the same this, these computers are going to be on different networks when you connect into VLAN. So that means all of them cannot be under this network that is 192.168.0.0 network. We're going to have to divide them into a separate network. So that means the IT will now be in a separate network. Um, management will be on a separate network. HR will be on a separate network. So each of these are going to be on separate networks. So now we're going to go into the PCs and give them the IP addresses first. So go it again, open the PC, then desktop, then configuration, then you add the IP address of the IT is 192.168.1.1. I'll make it 2.2. Then there's no gateway. Gateway is the address of your router. We don't have a router in this yet okay and we don't need it for now <clears throat> so next we're going to go into management desktop configuration then we have 192.168.2.1 .2 .2 .2 .2 again that's a separate network desktop configuration 192.168.2.0, no, sorry, .3.2, okay, close that here, desktop configuration, 192.168.4.1, Okay, we're giving the second address from the network. So remember, each of these is a network that is separate. They are separated by the third octet. You can see that one, two, three, four. So that is what separates each of these networks. So no default gateway, close it. So the fact that there are different networks means that we cannot communicate together these things are very separate we cannot talk so if i go in here and say ip config command and i try to talk to or ping um management which is just my next neighbor so ping 192.168.2.2 you see we cannot talk okay so so we will have to now configure VLANs. Even that is also not going to allow us to still talk because each of these are on different networks, unless we now introduce what we call what a router, but that will be in the future. So now let's, the purpose for this class again is to learn how to create VLANs, okay? And the VLANs, each of them have to have what? A separate network address an IP address, okay? So so now let's go into the switch and begin the creation of our VLANs. So you click on the switch and click on the CLI, press enter, and go into the, let's go into the privilege exec, execute mode first so that we could be able to see the default um, VLAN configuration in the system. So we say enable first, sorry, enable. Then we show VLAN brief, show 
VLAN brief. So VLAN brief would give us the current VLANs that we have in the system. So by default, all the switch ports are connected to VLAN one. These are also some um, outdated, uh, what's the name, VLANs that Cisco always, I mean, include in their configuration. So I'm going to create the new VLANs that we have and now assign the respective ports to those VLANs. And when I show VLAN brief next time, you should see the new VLANs that we created. Okay, so let's begin. So we go into the configuration mode, configure terminal. Okay, and then we to create a VLAN, just say VLAN and then the VLAN ID. Okay, then we name it. So the first one, we're gonna give it, um, so IT VLAN will be VLAN 10, management will be VLAN 20, HR will be VLAN 30, and then voice will be VLAN 40. So we click on that and then say VLAN 10. That's it, that's how you can do VLAN. And press enter. And now we give it a name. So we just say name, then what? Name of the VLAN is called IT. Okay, like that. So next one, VLAN 20. Name, management. Next one, VLAN 30. Name it HR. The last one, VLAN 40. Name it voice. Easy as that. So now let's, it's time for us to now add each of these VLANs, I mean, these PCs from the respective department to the appropriate VLANs. So before that, let's show our VLAN brief so that you can see um, the new um, configuration. So show IP, show VLAN brief. So now you can see that VLAN ID, VLAN 10, IT, VLAN ID 20, management, VLAN ID number 30, HR, VLAN ID number 40, um, voice. So now these other. So now it's time for us to remove the respective ports. So port five, no one, port five, port 10 and port 15 to each of these respective uh, ports that we connected them to. So we go back into the switch and then go to the ports. So configure terminal. or config T, easy as that. So we go into the interface of the port. So port, so interface F01, that's the first one that I connected IT to. So enter and you convert the switch port to access port. This will allow us to assign the, I mean the, the PC to the particular VLAN. Okay, switch port mode, access, change the mode to an access port. So now from there, you can say what? Now switch port, access, VLAN, then no, the VLAN ID, VLAN 10. So look, you see change from green to orange. That means that now PC and IT have been changed, have been moved from the default VLAN to IT now. So, but once we're done, I'm gonna show run the whole command for you to see. So we're gonna do the same thing for, so interface F05, change it to access port first, and then change the VLAN, add it to the VLAN, what, 20. So the same thing, you see the yellow, uh, orange light. So that means that it has moved also. So next one, 
VLAN 10, no, so uh, uh, interface F010, then change it to an access port first, switch port mode access, and then from there, then you what? Add it to VLAN 30. Next one, interface F0, 15. Make it an access port first. Then you add it to the what? VLAN 40. Exit. Now from here, we're going to now go back out and then check the configuration of the VLANs. So show VLAN and BR, interface brief. Show VLAN brief, breathe. Okay, so now you can see that F01 have been moved from the default into port, into um, IT VLAN. Likewise, 20 has been moved into what? F05 have been moved to 20, F10 have been moved to HR, and then 15 has been moved to what? Voice. So this is how you create a VLAN. And this is how you, um, this is how you move the, the different ports into the different VLANs. Okay. Now, what do we do to the remaining ports? Okay, so I want to use that opportunity to show you how you add a range of ports so that um, into um, a particular maybe VLAN or maybe to disable them. So let's do that. So let's say configure terminal. Configure T, okay. So interface, then you give what? A range, that means I want to select a particular range of ports and put them into a particular VLAN, okay. So interface range, then what? F0, the, then the name, starting from the port number. So F from number two, all the way to number four, I want them to be part of the VLAN 10. So F02-4, that is a range of ports. So make it access port as well, so switch port, mode access then switch ports access vlan 10. we just added f2 f3 and f4 into vlan 10. i want to do the same for um f6 to all the way to 9 for vlan 20. so again a range but this one from what six dash um, nine. Then switch port. Access. Mode first. Mode. Access. Then switch port access. VLAN twenty. So as you can see, now let's go back out and I will show you the VLAN brief. Show VLAN brief. You can see that I have moved from, so now ports F01 all the way to five are now, and what? IT. No, port F1 all the way to four are in what? IT VLAN. And then F6, uh, F5, all the way to nine, are in what? Management VLAN. So this is how you, you are dividing this number of switch ports by the what? Number of VLAN, like by putting them in what? Into some respective um, VLANs. So this is how you also add what? A range of ports as well. So now that we are done with the configuration, we still cannot be able to ping, but in some sense, we have now what divided our network into what VLANs. Okay, so in our next video, I will introduce a router that will allow us to do inter domain routing. So remember, each of these ports, like a connection between a PC to a switch, each of these constitutes what we call a collusion domain. A 
collusion domain. Oh, let me see how I can do that. Okay, so this is a collusion domain. So every switch port is what? It's a collusion domain because there's a possibility what? Of a collusion that could occur in there. Okay. So that is it. That's what we call a collusion domain. Okay. Now for a broadcast domain, that means that when we have a router in there, so so each of so this is one broadcast domain. One broadcast domain. Okay. But each of these is what? A collusion domain because there's a possibility of what a collusion occurring. Okay. So let's now look at some of the sample Cisco questions that you are likely to see in a Cisco exam. So let's walk them through. You wanna tell me what you think, your answers in the comment section, and then I'll be able to confirm with you. So this is a Cisco question. It's saying that a switch has 48 ports and four VLANs. How many collusion and broadcast domains exist on the switch? So this is the arrangement. Collusion is the first one, and the second one is the broadcast. So A, is it four collusions and 48 broadcasts? B, is it 48 collusions and four broadcasts? C, is it 48 collusions and one broadcast? Uh, D, is it one collusion? and 48 broadcast E, is it four collusions? And then E, uh, one broadcast? So tell me your answer for question 45. It's a sample Cisco question, exam question. Um, I pulled from the question bank. So um, just tell me your, your answer in the comment section. Now, next one, which two characteristics describe the access layer of the hierarchical network design model for Cisco. The answers include, so th this is the hierarchical network design model. And you can see this is the access layer. What can you see on the access layer? That is the clue. Yeah, switch is down there. So now what are the, they say choose two answers. Okay, is it layer three support, B, port security, C, redundant component, D, VLANs, and EPOE. Please tell me your answers in the comment section. Now, next one, um, we have this, a host. So observe this before. So it's saying that a host can communicate with host B, but not host C or D. How can the network administrator solve this problem? So a host A, A is here in VLAN 2, can communicate with host B because they are in the same VLAN, yes, okay, okay, but cannot with host C and D. Okay, host C and D are also in, what? in, the, in the same VLAN. So that means the host C and D can also talk together. Perfect. Now, how can the network administrator solve this problem? Okay, so here, a, configure host C and D with IP addresses in the 192.168.2.0 network. B, install a router and configure a route to route between VLAN 2 and 3. C, install a switch and put host C and D on that switch while host A and B remain on the original switch. Now D, enable VLAN trunking protocol on the switch. Okay, so interesting. Now, next question, observe this clearly. So we have an interface VLAN one, IP address this, that, no shutdown exit, interface gateway, then this, then uh, line VTY, Cisco password login, okay. A network administrator has configured a Catalyst 2950 switch for remote management by 
by passing into the console the configuration command that are shown in the exhibit. However, a telnet session cannot be successfully established from a remote host. What should be done to fix this problem? A, is it changed the first line into interface fast Ethernet 01? Or change the first line to interface VLAN 0 slash 1? or change the fifth line into IP default gateway 192.168.17.241, or change the fifth line to IP route uh, 000 default static route, okay? Or exit, or, or change the sixth line into con zero. So now I am waiting for your comments and your responses to these questions and for the answers we will discuss them in the next video where i'll be introducing a router in this so that to allow these pcs interact that means they can talk together in the next video thank you so much for watching i look forward to your comments and uh in our next video Please like this video if you like it and then share and then subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good day. Bye.